Do you have trouble reading more than two sentences? Do you have difficulty making it all the way through a TikTok? Are you about to click back on this video? Stop! You might have a short attention span just like me and instead of letting that be a disability, you can turn that into a superpower just like I have if you are willing and capable of even just watching the next one minute of this video. I'm Justin Khan, co-founder of Twitch, here to make you these beautiful YouTube videos. And today we're gonna to talk about short attention spans and how to turn those into superpowers. For myself, I have a very limited attention span. If we've ever been on a Zoom call, not with you, but like with most people, with other people, we might be talking to each other, but then I'll be opening up a web browser, looking at Reddit, uh, reading my email, sending text messages. Uh, and I've trained my eyes to just focus directly on the camera. You know, for me, like the internet and uh, phones, it's like kryptonite. And I think that's true for many other people. You might be someone for whom uh, you've constantly plagued by the distractions of modern life and the dopamine hit that lies behind using your phone, checking Instagram, looking at Twitter or X, looking at uh, TikTok, swiping to the next video, swiping someone on Tinder, whatever awesome thing might be lurking around the corner distracting you from whatever you're trying to get done right now. For most of the time, you probably feel like that's tough to make your way in the world under these conditions where you're always constantly distracted. But I'm here to tell you it's okay. It's not that uncommon, number one. And number two, there's a bunch of ways that having a short attention span is actually to your advantage in the world. Here's what they are. All right, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, your ability to context switch is greatly enhanced. Uh, so I think it's oftentimes in the modern world we're deluged with different information, pings, requests for information, and uh, there's a lot that we have to do. And oftentimes it can be hard to mentally manage all of these things. But if you're like me and you have a relatively short attention span, it also comes, the flip side of that is that you have this ability to context switch and kind of immediately dive into a new topic. And so often I'm just answering stuff as it comes in. As an investor, an entrepreneur, I'm often juggling, you know, I'm working on multiple companies, different investments, YouTube videos, uh, whatever else. And I am able to kind of like immediately dive into that topic, write some stuff down, answer questions, et cetera, and then flit away to the next topic. And while I'm probably not accomplishing any super deep work in that way, I am able to balance a lot of different spinning plates all at the same time. And that has helped me uh, be who I am and work on many different companies, many different investments, help a lot of the different portfolio companies, all while maintaining my own sanity. I've gone back and counted through the different threads that I've had in a given day, and sometimes it's hundreds. And, you know, somehow I can manage all of that in my own mind. Number two for me has been that I have consequently, because of my short attention span, have become quite focused actually on what's important and then also good at delegating. A lot of people with short attention spans or ADHD, they don't like slash are potentially incapable of doing sustained long-term mental work. Well, let me put it this way. If I want to sit down and write something good, I have to like really focus on getting myself in the zone to have sustained mental work, right? So I'm turning off notifications, getting in the right time of day when my mental acuity is highest, and then I have to sit there and get the, all the preconditions exactly right, and then I can write something for a long period of time. Most of the time, I can't do sustained long mental work of like, doing forums and you know writing long reports and stuff like that and society has created all this what i would call fake work uh which you know dictating people create all this written artifacts for random shit that you don't really need it's all fugazi it's fucking vapor bullshit that people have invented in our quest as a society to invent never-ending work people who have short attention spans often are just like i'm not gonna do that bullshit <laughs> I refuse, I'm not going to do it, which leads to what I would define as an innovative way of thinking where people are trying to cut out the bullshit and just make decisions much more quickly. And so I think you have a lot of short attention span people who are entrepreneurs, innovators, who refuse to do all of these long tasks that society is trying to impose on them. 
The other side of that coin is delegation, which is that I think a lot of short attention span people are like, okay, I'm gonna make the decision super quickly, or I can be involved in making this decision because it's really parsing all this information and then boom, making the decision. But I'm gonna delegate all of the implementation around this. So for me, it's like I might decide how we're gonna implement something at a, on a company, but in terms of the actual modeling of it or the um, execution of it, the project management of it, my default mode is always how can I get someone else to do that? Another superpower that I think that short attention spans deliver to you is creativity. Uh, because short attention span people are always focused on so many different things, have often many hobbies, many interests. I think you're always in a position where you're taking in information from many different sources, which is fuel for your creativity and creating creative solutions to problems, you know, entrepreneurial solutions, uh, creative new works. Short attention spans can be helpful when it comes to gathering massive amounts of data and inputs uh, that are involved in creating new ideas and works. Here's another one. You're less likely to be taken in by sunk cost fallacy. Uh, so a lot of short attention span people, you know, you start reading a book, then you start watching a movie and you're like, mm, this is boring, eh, next. And uh, I think unless something's really high quality, really captivating media, you're not really that interested and um, you're more willing to just abandon ship instead of reading all the way through like a 500 page book because you started it, which is fucking stupid. <laughs> a waste of time. I mean, most books are trash and um, you know, you should just immediately abandon them as soon as you start. I'm just kidding. Not most, some. And this is even true for bigger things like investments, jobs. There's a lot of times when you start something, maybe start a new job, you're like, wait, this is not working. And most people are like, they have some cost fallacy. And they're like, oh shit, I gotta stay here. You know, I already put all this effort into applying and getting this job or whatever. Whereas like the right thing to do might be just walk out the door. It's not working. Abandoned ship. Aren't there all these attention span trainer apps? Just download one of those and then don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to smash subscribe and uh, goodbye. <laughs>